check out the Ruger 5.7, see if it's worth it. since I've been shooting it and it's still running great. This gun is a good gun. Mag drops free. slides cut so that you can put a mount for a red dot on it the only ones I could find though are the Boris or the Vortex I like to use my RMRs and I couldn't find a mount to where I could use that which if I did I got a feeling it would overhang those two might be thinner I'm not real sure on that it has the high vis sight it's got the front pick rail so if you wanted to put a light or anything like that on it it's got a safety on it easy to access with your thumb I'm not big on that and I'll show more on that on the bench but right now I'm gonna shoot it so you can see there's hardly any recoil on this gun metal jacket ones but it's still not bad the Ruger 57 I'm late to the party I've had this gun for a little while I wanted to put some rounds through it before I made a video I made a video on the Glock 44 when I didn't have that many rounds through it and then after maybe a thousand rounds my opinion changed so I got about seven eight hundred rounds through this gun and I just wanted to make a video and give my opinion. It's just my opinion. You might have a different opinion. That's fine. I'm going to tell you what I think about it. All right, let's get into the 5.7. It's been a while since I made a video. I've had a lot going on. Big life changes, redoing the house, all that good shit. So now I'm going to try to get back at it. The 5.7. It's got the grip. About like the LCP 380, the new one, the 22, the LCP 22. It's got the same style grip. The grip feels good in your hand. I like the way it feels. The gun hardly has any recoil. Like I said, I don't plan on carrying it. You could carry it. You could conceal carry it, but it's going to hurt like hell. It's too damn big. But it comes with two 20 round mags. I mean, that right there is badass in itself. So it's got a front pick rail front and rear serrations and the serrations are aggressive that's what I like I like them to be where they feel like they're cutting my fingers I've slid this slide back thousands of times and my hand has never slipped so that's a real good thing it's got the high vis front sight that thing glows like you got a red dot so the safety I do not like guns with safeties that's just me some people do it's ambidextrous, but it is easy to access when you're shooting. You can flip it down real quick and go to work, and then you can put it back on. So I do like how it's easy. Some guns I have to readjust my hand to get up there and do it. This one you don't. When you're shooting, it's right there. It's not hard to hit. You don't have to change your grip. Everything on that's fine, but I still don't like the safety. So the trigger... I like it, but it won't slide back when it's safety. I'll show you the trigger. It's a good trigger pull. It's not too much. The reset is what I don't like. 
it's not loud I like a a really audible reset and I like a reset that's gonna kick my finger back that's just the way I like it I mean you can hear it here but when you're outside with the wind and shit you can't hardly hear it but there's your travel it's not too bad break the triggers nice and this gun hardly has any recoil that's one of the best things about it you got 20 rounds of some badass ammo and no recoil I did one test where I shot as fast as I could and I was center mass on a silhouette 20 yards I mean that's not far but some guns when you shoot you're you're flipping so this one I was able to shoot really fast and hit them no problem so that that in itself is worth it to me the mag release is easy to hit when I'm holding the gun I do have to shift my hand that's because this is so wide you got 20 round mags and those bullets are very aggressive looking so you have to shift your hand to hit it which I'm not gonna carry it again so that doesn't matter to me I can do that but for $5.99 is what I paid for this I paid $12.99 for my FN so and I don't really like the FN, but this gun, I like the look of it. I like the feel. I like the way it shoots. I like this gun way better than the FN. And, I mean, it does have a lot to do with the price. So. And I've probably got seven, 800 rounds through it. And this gun has not had one malfunction. No kind of stovepipes, nothing. I haven't had not one slip up anything. I didn't throw it in the pond or anything like that because I don't plan on carrying it, but I had no problems whatsoever out of this gun, and I don't believe I will have any. And if I do, it's going to be something simple. So you got a bullet 20 rounds shooting 1,700 feet per second. You can't beat that. Here's the bottleneck ammo I was talking about. This is the Federal. I never put ammo on the bench. People say don't put ammo on the bench with the gun. And I didn't do it just because I didn't want shit talk to me. But I'm not a dumbass. I'm not going to shoot myself in the fucking head. So I'm capable enough to have ammo and a gun on a bench. So This is the Federal Full Metal Jacket, 40 grain. And then this is the FN brand with the ballistic tip. And that one looks good. And they're about the same price. So I get whatever I can find at the time. And with everything with this coronavirus going on, ammo's getting harder and harder to find. And fuck cheaper than dirt. I know everybody's had to have seen it by now. Price gouging, shithead motherfuckers. So, But these rounds right here are awesome. They both do good. The ballistic tip, I have a little more recoil. I don't know if that's in my head or if it's... It don't. It just feels like it does to me. But they both shoot good. I think these companies keep making these guns. There's going to be more companies to make ammo. Right now, I only know of those two. I've heard rumors of other companies coming out with some cooler stuff. But I don't know how true it is. I'm waiting for Toll Ammo to come out with a steel cased one for ten dollars a box that would be great so anyway the Ruger is real easy we've already cleared it the ammo isn't in the gun you got this tab right here you can use your magazine you can use anything you want you can use a screw anything you have to push that in from this side like that and then you're able to flip it over and spin that down and then it just comes off it's real simple it's easier than a Glock it's got a captured guide rod and this little long skinny barrel And that, I looked at it the first time, I'm like, damn, it don't have a feed ramp. But I'm guessing that little bevel there acts as a feed ramp. Everything about it's weird. It's not like a traditional poly gun, but it's a good gun, nonetheless. 
goes back in just like any other gun I didn't get the barrel in right Ring goes right down there on the flat spot. It's in place. That there, you can see, has the hook right under there. It'll only go on one way, so mess with it till you get it. It falls on like that. Slide it back a little bit. Flip that back up. And push it in. And there you go. Build stripping's real easy. But yeah, this gun, it's, it's a good gun. I usually don't keep guns too long. After I get them, I, I get them mainly just to shoot them and see what I think. And then I'll trade them off or something. But I believe I'll keep this one just because I like it so much. And I'll only use it when I go out shooting or flinking or whatever. I'll never carry it. It won't be a truck gun. It'll sit in the safe, so it's it's that good. But if you got any other questions, if you want to take it down further, we can do that. I actually hadn't stripped this one down further, but I do all of them, so I'm going to. I won't do a video on it unless somebody needs it, but... It's not hard. Ruger's generally pretty easy. But that's it for the Ruger.